What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Autodesk Fusion 360 tutorial for you. So in this video we're starting off a series on assemblies and joints inside of Autodesk Fusion 360. So we're going to talk about how you can use components and joints in order to simulate movement of objects inside of Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so one of the powerful functions built into Fusion 360 is the ability to simulate motion and movement. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off this series by creating a rotational movement simulation inside of Fusion 360. So in order to do that, um, the first thing that's gonna be really important is your objects need to be modeled as components. So you can see how these are showing up inside of my components rather than my bodies down below. Well, I don't wanna to get too far into that. Basically, the way that you can do that is if you were to create like a sketch up here and then you were to extrude it when you're modeling instead of selecting the option for new body you could select the option for new component in order to model this as a component if i was to click ok this would show up in inside of my component section right here alternatively if you did have objects that were in here as bodies inside of your bodies function you can take these and right click on them and create components from those bodies so if i was to do this you can see how that object gets moved down here rather than up there so there's a couple different ways to create those components but these need to be components in order for fusion 360 to recognize them to use this function and so these two hinge pieces have been modeled as components. So you can see how as I mouse over these, each one of those shows up. Well, now what I want to do is I want to create a joint between these two components. So the way that we're going to do that is if you click on the button for a symbol right here, you move your mouse down, you can see how there's an option for joint. And so if we were to select joint, you can see how this gives us a menu where we need to select a couple components. The first thing you're gonna notice is when you mouse over these different areas, you get this little marker that inferences to different points. So that marker is really important because that basically sets the base location from which your rotation or your uh, movement is going to happen or your joint interaction is going to happen. So in this situation, for example, we want these to both move based on the same point because we want them rotating around the same point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move our mouse in here and we're gonna find the little location where this inferences to the standing up point right between these two circles right here. So you can see how when I do this, um, as I mouse over these, they turn gray. And so what that indicates is that's telling you which one of these is going to be created as a component. So if I was to click on this point or as a part of the joint. So if I was to click on this point, for example, you can see how this object right here turns a gray color. And so this gray color indicates that that's been selected as a part of the joint. Well, then you want to mouse over the exact same point so you don't want to mouse over anything other than that exact same point because you're basically setting the base from which this rotation will happen. But what we want to do now is we want to click on this point again to select our second object. You're going to notice that what this does, now that you have both these components selected, is it's going to give you a preview of the type of movement you have selected. So a lot of you by default, this will be in here as just a rigid joint and so you're going to notice this kind of bounces around in here don't worry about that because we're not going to use the rigid point what we need to do is we need to select the kind of motion that we want and notice there's a few different kinds in here like for example this slider would allow this to slide up and down along an axis or cylindrical would both spin this and also move it up and down along axes at the same time. Well, what we want, because this is a rotational situation, is we want to select the revolute function. What the revolute function is going to do is that's going to spin this object around this central point right here. And to get a preview of that, you can click on this play button and that'll animate your preview so you can see what that movement's going to look like. And if for whatever reason this is spinning along the wrong axis, like this, you can use this drop down to select the correct axis, in this case, the Z axis. And then you're gonna click on OK. And so what you've done is you've set up a joint. Um, it's a relationship between these two objects. And you're gonna notice that when I click and drag this now, inside of my simulation mode, um, when I click and drag this inside my simulation mode, you can see how this is now simulating that movement and allowing this to rotate based on where I click and drag. And so we still have a problem with this though. And the problem is that this is allowing this to rotate through 
this other object, which is not very realistic. So what we want to do is we want to put some limits on this join. So in order to do that, you can go into your joints function and you can see or in your joints uh, in the joints section of your browser, you can see how this joint was created inside of joints and you can right click on this and there's a button for edit joint limits. So what edit joint limits is going to do is that's going to allow you to set a minimum and a maximum number of degrees that this can rotate. So in this situation, I want to select minimum and maximum and you can either type values in here or you can also click and drag these little flags. So you can see how as I click and drag this little flag, I'm getting a movement inside of this object and it's setting a number of degrees. So in this situation, for example, depending on what your hinge looks like, you can set a maximum number of degrees to, in this case, let's call it, and let's make sure this joint would actually work this way. But let's say this joint would probably max out at about negative 155 degrees. You can see how you can set that value inside of your minimum. Well, for the other side, your maximum value is going to be 155 degrees because it turns the other direction. So what you've done is you've told this, don't move any further than 155 degrees on this axis or on this axis. So what you've done is you've limited this movement to something that's more realistic in the real world. So now if you were to click OK, and then just go back into your regular mode, you can see how you can drag this, but it won't go any further than this point. So you can use this to simulate the actual movement of this object in the real world. And so you can use this method to create different kinds of hinges and other things as long as you set that same base point. So you can see how I can create this longer hinge with this object right here in the same way. So once you get an idea of the way to set that point, that's really probably the biggest thing is just modeling as components and setting the correct point. From there, creating things that can actually simulate movement is actually fairly easy from a rotational standpoint. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Have you created joint in Fusion 360. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.